All right, all right everybody, what is going on? Today's video, we are gonna talk about gyno. We're gonna talk about my experience. I'm gonna give you guys my personal advice, the three major keys to take into consideration when getting your gynecomastia surgery. We're talking about a local anesthetic. We're not talking about a general anesthetic. When you get put out, when you get put to sleep, you will stay a night in a hospital which means that the first night of your recovery will be sorted for you, you don't have to worry about it. But if you do go under a local, you will be out of the clinic in two hours and be at home and not knowing what to do. So, that was the position I was in. Now this advice is gonna to apply to both, both cases. Um, you, you know, whether you're at home two hours after the surgery or two days after the surgery, you're still gonna be going through the same things and there's still the same fundamental keys that you need to keep in mind to make sure your recovery goes a lot better than mine did. So, with that being said, let's roll the intro, and I'll see you in a minute. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Alright you guys, so major keys when it comes to gyno recovery. We're going to talk about one thing you can do before your surgery, uh, we're going to talk about two things you can do after your surgery. So, prior to surgery, it's going to be in your best interest to get in the best shape possible. Now, by that, I mean lose body fat. I mean get that shape to your chest so that when they do excise the glands, you know, they're not going to cut into body fat. They're not going to start taking out unnecessary uh, you know pockets of fat because what that will do is cause indentations it's going to cause you know a, a non aesthetic result so for you to spend money for you to put yourself into debt possibly for the surgery it's going to be in your absolute best interest to make sure you are as lean as possible before getting the surgery not only losing body fat but building a little bit of muscle as well so if you're six months out from surgery okay I'm gonna give you guys some straight numbers here Six months out from surgery, you know you're getting it, you've never trained in your whole entire life. You might be 15 years old, you might be 50 years old. Start doing push-ups. Give me 30, then 40, then 50, then 60, and start doing 100 push-ups a day, okay? If you're not going in the gym, any, you know, if you are going in the gym, you're training chest, well, all good. But if you're not, and you're just at home, and you're about to get the surgery, start doing some push-ups. You're going you're gonna to actually start getting stronger, you're gonna build some strength and you're gonna start building a little bit of mass there. So that means that when you get the surgery and your glands are taken out, you're gonna have a nice, you know, a nice little shaped chest. It's not gonna be completely flat. It's gonna have a little bit of shape to it, which is what we all want as guys, right? So that's what you can do before the surgery. What you can do on the day before the surgery, relax. Okay, relax, it's gonna be okay. As long as you've got full confidence in your surgeon, you know, I would say pick a surgeon you can talk with, you can get along with. Uh, it's going to make a huge difference in the post-op care. So with that said, the surgery is done. You're out of surgery. You go home. You've most probably got drains in. Now, I've heard of people get drains. I've heard of people not get drains. Obviously, that's up to the surgeon. I feel like, I feel like drains are necessary for a proper gland excision. Um, I don't know about liposuction. I feel like a, dran, a gland is not necessary for liposuction, but if they are making a cut, you know, they're, they're opening up this, this basically your breast, uh, you know, cutting, literally cutting with the scalpel out your, your gland and then trying to close it up without putting a drain in there, there's going to be a lot of bleeding. All right, there is. So they put the drains in, they cover it up, they tape it down you're at home. Depending on when the doctor tells you to go back in for your post-op check, it might be two days, it might be four days, it might be six days. If it is anything less than three days, so 72 hours, if you're back in there within 72 hours and he's telling you to take the drains out, I would be apprehensive. That was my mistake. That was my, that was my mistake, guys. I took the drains out after 48 hours when it probably needed another 48 hours after that. So not only that, but I took the drains out, the next morning I hopped on a plane and flew three hours back to Alice Springs. So two things you can do post-surgery. Two mistakes I made, straight up. Taking the drains out too early and flying within the first week. 
don't do either of those things. Wherever you're getting the surgery, if you are flying interstate, if you're flying into another country, stay there, man. Stay there for a week. Don't try and get back home. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know why the hell I wanted to get out of there so soon, but really, thinking back, I do. It's because I was lonely. I was by myself, and that's another thing I'd say. Get someone with you. Take a friend, get your mum, get your grandma, someone to help you out, because you can get around in those first few days, but it is gonna be sore. It's gonna be very sore. Um, you're gonna need help with medication. You're gonna need you know, help getting a drink. Um, you've got these, these really, really tight tapes on and a vest, a compression vest. It's not easy to get around. It's not, it's not a minor surgery, all right? It's not. They're cutting something out of your body. And you know what? Some people's bodies are not gonna like that. They're not gonna like the surgery. They're gonna reject it. Some bodies are gonna reject having surgery. And you know, what that means is that you're gonna bleed more than, more than others, you're going to possibly have infections. Um, and that was the one that actually, thinking back, the reason why I didn't get the hematomas cut open is because at that point, putting another foreign object into that pocket of blood was going to possibly cause an infection and that is not what I wanted. I did not want that. And so I'm happy to say that yes, my little wound was open for a good month and a half because that blood was still continuing to come out, but I never got an infection. So oh, it's bloody hard, man. It's, it's really hard. You know what? I would have, I would have taken the risk of, of getting an infection to get rid of those hematomas early. I, I definitely would have. So looking back now, what can you do? Get in good shape, post-surgery, don't take the drains out too early. Stay where you are, have someone to help you. And if you do develop hematomas, get them cut open and excised, okay? That's some real advice, that's some real talk. Real talk on gyno, I've got no problem talking about it, I've been through it now. Some of you guys say that I had a, a, you know, a very, very small and insignificant case of gyno, but really it wasn't. If you've got it, you've got it. It's most probably been with you since childhood and it's time to get it out. So that was me four months ago. I'm gonna give you guys a bonus little look here all right, it's been five months post-surgery. So this, this is how we're looking. Five months post-surgery. There's still some discoloration, but as far as, as far as how it looks, how the line's looking, I'm happy. I'm happy. But there was some testing times there for a while. So anyways, guys, I hope that's, hope that's helped. If you're going through you know, your own recovery right now, I'm here for you. If you need some help, hit me up. All right? By all means, like the video, press subscribe for more, and if not, I'm sure I'll see you guys back here another time. Peace.